hello. Uh, yeah, well, I guess with my short presentation, my short comments, we'll probably get back on track in terms of keeping time. Um, I'd like to start by thanking IFPMA for the invitation to launch. And although I'm not as much of an expert, expert as the previous two speakers and maybe some of the people attending here, I'll, I'll hopefully be able to make some comments on, on the report that would be useful. Um, I'd just like to state that per personally, I found the research to be quite interesting and informative, um, particularly on, on the importance for, for the need for clear government commitment um, on, 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 on the issue, not only at the international level, but also at the national level. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to sort of stick to what I know best, and that's just a little bit on, on Botswana, right, and what you said. So, as you noted in, in, in your report, um, the political world in Botswana has, has been quite remarkable with, with regard to, to the treatment of HIV infection, and the government has worked very hard in, in establishing an effective domestic health care system, um, which has as you've seen over the years, paid dividends in terms of the number of people receiving treatment. Um, at the present time, I guess I can just share that we've achieved a universal coverage in Botswana on the treatment of HIV infection, with 95% of the people estimated to be in need of treatment receiving that treatment. Um, it's roughly 170,000, but then from a population of 1.8, um, for us, it is quite a lot. Uh, for the quarter ending June 2011 this year, I think our program in preventing the mother-to-child transmission has resulted in a, well, has shown a transmission rate of about 2%, which means that for every 100 HIV-positive um, mothers, 98% of them um, have HIV-negative babies which is truly a great achievement for us, having been one of the highest infected sub-Saharan African countries for, for quite some time. Um, we all know, I think I'll say, that the issue of access to medicines is a rather complex one. And as I think maybe in the report and maybe some of the speakers have said, there cannot be a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, we are all different, even as developing countries, we have different levels of, 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 of our achievements and progress. Uh, I believe that the report highlights how it is important for governments to think about the various mechanisms and options to ensure that their citizens get access to the treatments that they need. And in this, it would probably be useful for policymakers to be able to understand the different approaches which have been adopted and, and, and how successful these have been. Um, as said earlier, the report uh, really shows these in the selected group of countries. But I, I, I would, as previous speakers have said, would have liked to see other countries being included um, to give a much broader perspective and, if possible, also to include other disease areas. There's, there's a tendency I know I said to, to Andrew Jenner who was talking to me the other day that we tend to focus in countries, particularly developing countries, on, on HIV infection only um, at the cost of focusing on other diseases that may contribute um, to either the treatment or the obtaining, oh, well, if you obtain HIV infection. Um, I believe it was a, if it was a broader a coverage of, of the various diseases and how they, well, intellectual impact on each other, that maybe it would help governments in, in creating a holistic approach towards the treatment of diseases overall. Uh, successful HIV infection management uh, also includes managing and treatment of co-infections, as I said before. And Bozana has worked very hard to establish partnerships with internationally recognized health foundations and the health industry and has tried to ensure that these are all complementary. But nevertheless, the issue of access to medicines for HIV treatment remains a serious challenge to Botswana and obviously other developing nations. Um, 
In this, I believe that the coordination of donor funds is essential to the success of the improved access to ARVs, um, with particular regard to the need to develop formulations of ARVs suitable for children, uh, particularly the small children who, who, who are HIV positive. And then, I think briefly, I just can sort of end off with, with, from the report, I see that other countries have benefited from having local manufacturing capability. Uh, we don't have that in Botswana. And mayhaps we were sort of looking at the benefits of having a regional production for sub-Saharan Africa as opposed to having each country have, because they wouldn't be able to, if you look at the the, the finances or the economies of the countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, suffice to say, I'm going to end off, HIV AIDS remains a very big issue in, in, in Botswana, and the government remains fully committed to its eradication. But we, we, we continue to have the challenges, obviously, that other countries have. Um, we're, 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 we've had success, great success, in treating the infection rate, but as I was talking to one of the health officials, he says we're treating, at public health, we're treating them at CD4 250, and the global proposal is that they be treated from 350, the CD4 count. Um, that will mean more financing from, from Botswana government. And that's an issue, or well, that's an area where a lot of the developing countries have a problem. Um, despite the fact that we're labeled as an upper, upper middle income country. So in this regard, we hope that we shall be able to work, continue to work with the donors and get further assistance so we can we can reach the 350 treatment mark and i believe that is all